The true value of AI comes from using your own organizational data in your AI applications. Though the problem that we run into usually with LLMs, though they work really well with text and markdown data and natural language, your most valuable information is usually structured in complex docs, whether that be PDFs, PowerPoints, Word documents, and more. These documents tend to have different structures, whether it be tables and consistent layouts, maybe nested elements, and they become difficult to use within your AI workflows. Now you can use traditional document parsers, but often you then lose the structural content and context of your docs and the output itself becomes unusable. Now this is where something like DocLink comes in. And DocLink is an open source tool that stemmed from IBM research, and it uses context-aware AI techniques to preserve the document integrity while converting these complex formats into clean markdown and JSON. And these are perfect for your RAG applications and other AI workflows that you're building. Docling differentiates itself from basic PDF parsers because it recognizes these different document structures like tables, figures, and headers, and maintains the relationships between them, which gives you usable data for your AI applications. Now, tools like Docling become even easier to use when you use Langflow. Langflow is a tool that allows you to seamlessly visualize your AI workflows, build your AI agents, and more. So today, I'll be walking you through the newly added components of Docling that we put into Langflow and how to build document-powered AI applications and workflows. Let's get started. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into Langflow and create a new blank flow. And you just have to search Docklings here in the component search. And there's the Dockling bundle. I'm going to start off with the Dockling core component. And this is what does all the heavy lifting for you. It handles the files, it runs the Dockling models locally, and it gives you control over different OCR methods. Um, so notice how easy you can just drop down the OCR and you see the options here for you. Easy, tester, rapid, and OCR are already built in for you. Um, you can also go into controls and see there are several other things you can toggle. But for now, we're just going to keep this pretty much default. So next, I'm going to bring in the export component. And this is where you see it takes in a data or data frame. So essentially, when you run this Docling core component and you upload your file, it will return a data or data frame object. And you can feed this into your export Docling co document component. And this is pretty much where the magic happens. So notice in the export format, which is the output we should expect from this component, we have several different options. We have Markdown, HTML, plain text and doc tags. And even if your file has some images, so maybe a PDF document, then you can also use different export modes. Um, you can choose to either use a placeholder or embed the image. And then we will get an output here. So um, for this, I will just need a chat output. And this will allow us to display the output of our component in the playground. So I'm going to select this file. So here is the Docklings technical paper that discusses the Docklinet dating set that their model is trained on, as well as some performance benchmarks against other competitor tools. But notice how this paper has several different types of formats and structures to it. Um, it has tables with different numerical values. It has images. It has um, a dual com column structure here as well. It has several paragraphs with its own context. So things like this will def definitely demonstrate how Docling is able to handle these complex formats for documents. So I will be uploading this into the core Docling component. Okay, so what I have here now is the core Docling component, which is handling the file upload. Then we have the export Docling document component, which is giving us the choice of the export format. In this case, I chose plain text, and I'm using a parser to stringify that output and give that back to us in the playground. So let's go ahead and run this. And now we can view the results here in the playground. So you could see how easy we see the Docling technical report. Um, we see these are the authors and then it structures it into each paragraph. Let's see how it was able to convert one of the tables. So here is an example of one of the tables that it built and was able to maintain the context there. So it's a really great and easy way to use the Docling tools um, in this visual format and able to easily upload your file documents as well and see the results in real time. 
Okay, now let's put these components into a real life use case. How about a rag pipeline? So this is where Docklink components become really useful and powerful because now we can upload, we can use the, for, the existing components that we have to upload the files. And Docklink also has a chunking component. So this is the one that we have here. And Docklink already has some implemented chunkers. So we have hybrid chunker and hierarchical chunker. And this will allow us to store them into our vector database of our choice, which is AstroDB. So now I can run this flow. And what's happening is we're uploading the file once again through the Docklink component, through the Docklink model, and then it's gonna get chunked by the chunking component and into our AstroDB vector database. Great, so we've seen our flow has built successfully, and we can now hop into our Astro database and actually see the chunks, and here they are. So Docklink was able to handle the chunking for us, and it did so while also converting and exporting and handling the complex document structure. So now we can use this in a retrieval flow that we have built here. I have a chat input that is giving a basically a search query to our vector database in natural language, and it's performing a vector similarity search to our database. It is parsing the results, and then it's putting it through a language model to give us the output. So now we're basically chatting with our PDFs with the power of Docklink in the background. And I can ask, what is this document about? And there's the response. This document is a technical report, including Docklink, an open source package designed for PDF document conversion. Great. What are some of the notable performance benchmarks? And here it returns that information. Again, these are values that came from some of the tables that were in the document. So Docklink was able to understand that information, parse it correctly, parse it in the best way. And now we can ask questions, not only from the text of the document, but also the tables, the images, and other embedded uh, figures that were in the document and in that technical paper. So what did we get here as the end result? We have our ingest flow, which allows us to load the data using the power of the Docklink components, and then chunk them into to these context aware chunks to store into our vector database, which allows us to build visually through Langflow this retrieval flow that allows us to take those technical concepts, the structures, the concept, the con complex tables and images from the report and use them and still be able to reference them in this question and answer flow. So those are the three Docklink components that we're going over today. It takes out the heavy lifting of processing documents for your AI workflows, for your RAG retrieval flows, and for other Gen AI workflows that you are trying to build. You can toggle with the different OCR methods and get a little bit deeper into those just by configuring the component itself. And that's the beauty of using Docklink in a platform like Lakeflow. Definitely try out the powerful Docklink components and use them in Lakeflow's platform. I'm excited to see what you build. Thank you.